This video could change your outlook on business forever. At the end of this video, I'm going to ask you, what was the one thing that drove me? We're going to use myself as an example for the next 30 minutes. Watch it on 2X, it's only 15 minutes, but it could change your life. The psychology of this one thing that overarches everything I do could take you from sad and depressed and feeling like you're not winning to finally winning and succeeding and becoming a multimillionaire. Hey everyone, Meet Kevin here. In this video, I'm going to go through a, a what happened to a Meet Kevin analysis and we'll end up where we are today so you're caught up with how things have really changed over the last four to five years because a lot has changed. Uh, in fact, back in 2016, I didn't even make YouTube videos. I basically just made YouTube videos to embed them on my website, and I kind of saw them as a way to introduce myself to potential customers as a real estate broker without them actually having to call me. That was less intrusive for them, and it was actually really good because when I sat down to meet with a lot of people face-to-face, -face, said, hey, here's a little about me, they're like, no, we've already watched all the videos on your website we love you, where do we sign? And I'm like, here. <laughs> it's it it wonderful. So videos have always been such a wonderful tool for a business and a side hustle. And quite frankly, if you don't have a side, a hustle, uh, I really think you ought to have one, mostly because as you grow a side hustle, you could start expensing things, you know, writing things off on your taxes that you might not otherwise be able to. Uh, now, this video isn't really a tax lesson. We talk a lot about that in the courses and there are other videos on YouTube where people talk about this, but there's some really cool reasons to have a side hustle. Uh, so if you're ever in sales, videos are fantastic, especially embedded on your website and not too professional, just casual. It's just you and the camera having a conversation. You know, it doesn't have to be uh, too, uh, too scripted or, or too overproduced. But a lot of people have wondered, hey, you know, where, where, where were you then and, and where are you now? And so what are your intentions? Uh, and uh, what are your goals and otherwise? And so I know this is a little bit more of a niche video uh, and, oh, I'm not even writing on the board. So let's write right here. Uh, let's go into 2020 Meet Kevin and let's go to 2024 for Meet Kevin and let's just draw uh, some comparisons so we kind of know what has changed and what hasn't changed. Uh, so first of all, in 2020, I had uh, two children and now I have seven children. So that's been something that's changed. Uh, in, going into 2020, I had uh, two employees, I had two employees in construction, which were amazing. They basically felt like the vast majority of my business outside of construction and real estate was just me. So I basically felt really sort of, if it's gonna get done, I gotta get it done, outside obviously of the construction. And this is really just a way of filling in those trades that are missing when you're doing renovations on real estate, right? Going back before 2020, remember I came from a real estate uh, profession. So as a real estate broker, I not only bought and sold homes for people, but I also invested in real estate. I thought if I was gonna sell people real estate, the best thing I could do is invest in real estate to prove that I think it's a good investment. And that still remains to be true. So. Uh, two children, uh, two employees, uh, mostly in construction, and basically a uh, business that used to be real estate sales, and in about 2018, you know, people always wonder like, oh, it was YouTube that made you millions of, I, I became a multimillionaire before YouTube, okay? Was, and I don't even like talking about it, but before YouTube. <laughs> so, uh, but I did transition to basically doing YouTube uh, full time because it did pay more than real estate sales, which makes sense. If you're making $500,000 doing one thing and $5 million doing another thing, why would you spend any time doing the 500K thing? Just an example. So two children, two employees, YouTube full time, and then uh, I would call my side hustle uh, real estate investing. Uh, and that was about it. Uh, that was sort of meet Kevin. And then of course I had sort of a lot of ideas. Uh, and my goal was always just to present myself as somebody who doesn't have all the answers, but as somebody who's working hard to always find the best path forward and find the truth. I'm a big fan of finding the, the middle ground, the uh, unbiased approach to what's, what's a great way we can all find the best path forward, right? To find solutions. 
I don't really like politics. I do cover it when it affects finance uh, on the channel, but generally a lot of my uh, YouTube channel is focused on finance. So it's stocks, it's real estate, it's investing, it's uh, debating what the best path forward might be. Big fan of that. I think that's useful for everyone. Again, that doesn't mean everybody has to agree with everything that I say. So we've gone from this in 2020 to something a little bit more than that. Uh, so I, I think I've actually lost count at this point, but we're probably somewhere around 13 or 14 uh, employees now. I guess I should have probably done a count before I made the video, but we're, we just hired somebody else, so I'm not sure if that brings us to 13 or to 14. But anyway, uh, so we're at about 13 or 14 employees between the various different businesses uh, and entities that are going on. So we've definitely bumped up in employees. YouTube uh, is no longer full-time for me. I consider it part-time. It's sort of the thing that I do first thing in the morning, although sometimes when there's breaking news throughout the day, I like to go live. But I really like to do my YouTube uh, work between 4.45 to about 10 a.m. Uh, that's still pretty good. That's still about a five-hour day on YouTube. And then, of course, there are times when I'm filming at other parts of the day. Uh, and oftentimes, this is every single day. So it still works out probably to 35 hours to 40 hours a week uh, for YouTube. So uh, that's something to consider. But it does give me this freedom to where after, say, 10 a.m., I could focus on other things that we have going on. So now, instead of having a side hustle of investing in real estate, we've got uh, two startups, which we'll sort of reset this page here and we'll go through this in a moment. And so rather than having ideas and focusing on a side hustle, we're actually uh, starting and, and running two different businesses, which is pretty cool. So uh, really, we've, we've kind of evolved from this 2020 of it's mostly just Kevin, to, hey, there are a lot of great, hardworking people working together on, on a mission uh, that we all believe in. I think, I really believe that if people didn't believe in the mission of, of what a company is doing, they wouldn't be there. It doesn't make sense to stay at a company where, where, where you don't really believe in the long-term vision of the company. So what, what, it, what are these startups, and do they even matter, and what do they say uh, to you? Well, first of all, to you, I think one of the big things we should be thinking of is, you know, we, we don't want to be like 80 and kind of like in the end game going, ah, you know what I had a lot of in my life? I had a lot of ideas. You know, it was just a few days, uh, well, it was at this point a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, I visited my dad. He uh, had a hip replacement surgery and then he uh, had to go into uh, like this recovery center for a couple, it was like 11 days. And so I visited him there, and boy, I'll tell you, that, is, that place is very, very depressing. If you want motivation, go to one of those recovery centers where it's mostly you know, people probably 70 plus. And that's very motivating. If, uh, you, you know, when, when you look at that facility and you think, this is an area with people who have all the experience in the world and probably endless ideas Unfortunately, their capacity uh, is, is uh, you know, dwindling uh, to be able to execute on some of those ideas. So that's, that's very depressing, but then also very encouraging and motivating because it certainly makes me think, I don't want to be end game and think, well, oh, I remember that idea I had. And I, I want to say, I remember what I did uh, to try to fulfill those ideas. And see, uh, before we get into the, the different things that are going on, for me, one of the reasons I always encourage people to do a side hustle is because if you have this main source of income and then you're doing a side hustle, well, what you have is you have a safety net. If your side hustle fails, you can always go back to your main source of income. Uh, this could be being a cop. It could be being a teacher. It could be, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with a W-2 job. In fact, for the vast majority of people, I encourage it. Is what does a W-2 enable you to do? It lets you invest in real estate uh, much easier than if you're self-employed. Uh, it lets you uh, take advantage of, of uh, a, a steady income and, and an ability to plan for your future. Well, at the same time, you could still put money into a side hustle. But if the side hustle fails, at least you have something to fall back on. 
Now, the nice thing about a side hustle is it also gives you write-offs. So some of the things in your life, like your phone bill, uh, the office in your home, some of your car, some of your other expenses that are necessary and ordinary for potentially both your W-2 job and your side hustle might become tax write-offs. That's great because now you could save money. Uh, this is, of course, a conversation for you to have with your CPA. Uh, this is not a tutorial for your taxes. Uh, but the point is, uh, this is a great way to fall back until, of course, your side hustle exceeds the income of your main hustle. And at that point, you could decide, does my side hustle become my main hustle? And that's great. That's a fantastic position to transition into. Uh, but we don't know that side hustles ever will. In fact, most side hustles probably won't. They, they, they just probably won't. And that's okay. Uh, but at least there's a chance. And what does it let you do? It lets you take idea and execute because there's a chance. And you, again, don't want to be in that facility when you're 80 going, man, if only I had tried. That to me is the scariest thing ever. I, I want to know I played the game to its fullest. Every chance I had to do something, to buy a property on that Monopoly board or, or to, to you know, experiment with, with a strategy or something that I thought would better the world. Uh, and, and bettering the world is also obviously associated with, with business success, money, right? But that's exciting to me. See, to me, you have to also think of what's your end goal, right? A lot of people look at the end goal, and, and this is okay, there's nothing wrong with that. They say, well, I, I want passive income. I want to be able to make, you know, a thousand bucks a day doing absolutely nothing. And that's fine, that's fantastic, that's great for a lot of people. I go crazy when I'm not doing anything. And mostly, I, I like, and, and life is very much like this, uh, but these sort of lulls, uh, they could either be lulls or low points, like where you get setbacks in your life. So this could be, you know, you get setback, you make a mistake, you lose money, or you just mentally feel like burned out or depressed. It's usually in these moments that soon you can get really excited as long as you keep pushing yourself. Eventually you'll get excited again. And then it's really easy to build on the whole and you get excited about something. And your goal is that this swiggly actually ends up trending up. So as you go through these phases, you're going through an uptrend uh, of success in your life. And of course, it's never going to be a straight line. Uh, if it is, you're probably, uh, probably not taking as much risk as, as maybe uh, otherwise you could. Uh, that could potentially minimize your downside, but could also minimize your upside. Anyway, so the goal for me is not the dollar sign. Uh, and I know that's easier to say if you've already got dollar signs, but a dollar sign to me really doesn't get you uh, what ultimately you want, which ultimately we don't want the dollar sign. The dollar sign is just a, a, an ability uh, to do something else. So that would be an ability to be free every day you wake up. Like, what do I want to do today? You know what? I feel motivated to do something. Okay. So money isn't the end goal. That freedom is the end goal. Or maybe... Uh, experiences are your end goal. That's great. Maybe it's uh, a house because that will make you feel good because, you know, let's call it a house with a view, right? Uh, you, you like looking at the ocean and having a, a coffee in the morning uh, with this ocean view. Great. That's, that's an idea as well. Uh, maybe money will get you uh, more time because you're uh, able to, I don't know, buy your own plane or, or whatever it might be. So money is generally not the end goal. Usually the end goal is some result, like freedom, experiences, a house that you want, or time. Uh, and so for me, money never became or was the end goal, mostly because you learn this when you study Aristotle. Uh, money is just a means to an end. Therefore, because it's a means to an end, it is not an end. It is not a good in itself. So now what I think is really cool is that once you've made sort of a base level of money, whether that's from your W-2 or your first startup or, or your first side hustle or whatever, you actually get to work. And that might sound crazy, but to me, it's actually freeing. For example, this morning, I woke up and said, you know what, I'm really motivated to make an Easter video. I'm so excited to share this sort of mentality that I have. Uh, about goals and, and, and life or success or whatever. 
Because ultimately, I think the best life is a life of both failure and success. Because if you only have success, well then, quite frankly, you don't even bother trying because you're just always gonna win. It's kind of like if you're born to like a billionaire, it probably makes it somewhat hard to fail. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and that somewhat feels depressing. I don't know what that's like. I wasn't born to a millionaire. <laughs> you know, we were basically bankrupt as a child. Uh, and so ha being able to switch from failure to success, not knowing when that's going to happen, makes it exciting. That's what makes ver life very exciting. And then, of course, ideally you have more success than you have failure. But see, what I like to do is have the freedom to say, you know what, today I get to work on this project. Whether that's you know the YouTube business, it's side hustle one, it's side hustle two, and get really motivated on that, and then sort of context switch between them. To me, that is so exciting because I have these little irons in the fire that uh, grow, and we have a wonderful team that helps work on growing these. So I go and work really hard, and then I work on the next thing really hard, and everything's kind of growing together and slowly. That's really fun. It's actually somewhat like children. I see all of these as sort of my little babies. Uh, because again, I have seven children, uh, you know, five of them being under five months old. Yeah, there's, there's a long story around that. Uh, made a little oopsie, let's just say. But anyway, so we've got uh, all these babies here. They have sort of the freedom to choose between these. But that doesn't mean you can't have experience. See, for example, yesterday, we, uh, for one of the startups, we'll, I'll explain the, house, uh, the various different startups in a moment, but for example, yesterday, we were in Sonoma, uh, then we were just north of uh, San Francisco, uh, looking at uh, another city, <laughs> then we were in Palo Alto, uh, and then we were in San Diego and La Jolla. And so we started the day at about 10, and I got back around home at about 9, uh, but in between this, not only were we able to get a lot of work done, uh, various different types of work, so I was able to spend time with the kids and create some YouTube content in the morning, uh, and then of course spend time with the kids, or, or sorry, uh, spend time with the kids in the morning, work during the day, uh, you could still have fun. See, at the end of the day, it was about 7.30, we're like, hey, and before we hop on the plane again, uh, let's go check out the local amenities and have a drink for all the hard work that we did in the day. So you can have fun experiences while also having the freedom to choose what you want to do. I didn't have to uh, fly to all these destinations yesterday. I didn't have to work, but dollar sign isn't the goal. The goal is experiences and the freedom to choose. I got to do this because I wanted to, uh, and that's very motivating to me. Okay, so uh, enough of that. That, uh, that, that, to me, is very, very exciting. Uh, and don't get me wrong, nice cars and nice houses and things like that. Of course, nice clothing or what. All that stuff is cool, but generally it's what those things enable you to do. The experiences, the people you get to spend time with, that is most exciting. So, uh, a lot of people now wonder, okay, so what, what is Meet Kevin? You always talk about all these startups. It seems like there's, there's so much going on, it's hard to keep track of. Uh, and that's okay, that's why I wanted to make this video in part, because there is a lot going on. So let's break it down and sort of just go, what, what is Meet Kevin? So if we go uh, Meet Kevin, what we really have is a few things. Uh, number one, we already know this because you're watching it here with YouTube. My favorite platform, I love this. I love sharing my ideas on my live streams. We do our, uh, I call it the stock market open live stream every morning at 5.45 when the market is open. That's on the market live stream channel. So it's not on the main channel. Sometimes I'm live there, so make sure you subscribe there. Uh, then of course we do the stock market open uh, live stream in the mornings. Uh, sorry, the course member uh, open live stream. And uh, that's usually at 6.45, 7. And uh, that's for course members, which today is Easter, so we do have a uh, coupon code link down below, expiring Easter. And then uh, we have a few other things. So then we have House Hack. And House Hack is having a baby, so we'll get to talk about this baby. House Hack's baby is uh, called uh, House Hack Homes, which is really exciting. And uh, it, it, this video is probably not going to be long enough. Uh, we won't have enough time to go through all that in detail, but I'll, I'll try in just a moment. Uh, then we have a couple other babies over here, though I'm going to sort of just loop them together under this name. Even though this isn't the only name, there are a couple entities here. It's just easier to explain as one. 
uh, you have stock hack, and this is what I'm getting all of my licenses for. It's really stock hack and suit hack, but that doesn't so much matter right now. And so what you have is you have these three businesses. You have uh, YouTube, then you have house hack, and house hack is having a baby. And then you have stock hack, which you could say it's having a baby as well. So briefly, what are these? Well, this, uh, let's just say I, I have this long-term vision of creating, and this sounds crazy, and, and we're not fundraising for this at all, but I'm just going to go for the crazy argument. I think with the company that we're building here, uh, we're going to be able to create the new Robin Hood. Sorry, Vlad, if you're watching, I'm coming for you. No, I, I, I love Vlad. I think he's a good guy. Uh, but uh, I think there are innovations left in finance. So I'm really, really excited about this. And uh, so I'm funding this right now. It's very exciting. Then, of course, we have uh, the YouTube channel, which you know about. And then we have House Hack. So House Hack, the easy way to think about these is House Hack is a business that basically tries to stabilize real estate by taking wedge deals and turning them into stable real estate. So I'll give you an example. We find a foreclosure, a short sale, a moldy house for $450,000. We spend $50,000 on renovating it. It's worth $600,000. Okay, how can we realize the $100,000 difference? All House Hack wants is the $100,000. That's what House Hack wants. Because if we could do that in the span of two months, we can make way more money doing those sort of cycles then we can just holding it forever and waiting for appreciation or rental cash flow, right? So House Hack's goal is, give me the 100K. <laughs> we want the difference between, you know, the arbitrage basically of what we paid, what we spent to fix it, and what it's worth, okay? Uh, then there's the baby, House Hack Homes, uh, and this is basically just a vehicle for people to invest in the actual appreciation of these properties. Uh, and the cash flow, the cash flow. So yeah, House Hack is having a baby. And uh, again, there are a lot of complexities with exactly how this works, but the, the very simple way to think of it is, is here's a baby that wants to find good deals and repeat the renovation cycle over and over and over and over and over again, and take the money in the meantime. Ideally, every five, 600K you put in, you get 100K out. So if you had a box, and it's like we put five or 600K in and we get 100K out, we can do that over and over and over again. What are we actually doing? Well, A, we're making a lot of money. And this sort of company hasn't existed before. So, so we think the valuation of this company could be huge uh, in the long term, which we're very excited about. No guarantees. We are in a fundraise uh, at househack.com slash 2024. So I have to be careful about what I say. Obviously, any investment comes with risk. Read the PPM, not a solicitation, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So that's, that's my opinion. Now, House Hack Homes is really unique because most people who want to invest in real estate with sort of a fund or a syndication or a real estate investment trust or whatever, they have to pay a crap load of fees. Uh, and these are acquisition fees, disposition fees, construction fees, renovation fees, loan fees, asset management fees. It's insane. And so what we want to do is create a zero fee real estate. And ideally, we want to be able to list that on a stock exchange. So, so you can kind of just swipe up, and then you get cash flow and appreciation with no fees. You want to sell, go. Like it's a free market, do whatever you want. That's really the goal here. So how does this relate to freedom and ideas and being able to do what you want? Well, see, I believe that there's something very interesting about failure. I think if your motivation is money, then you'll always be sad. Whereas if your motivation is an idea and you fail, you actually become happy because it makes it harder for your competitors to catch up with you and it guides you in the right path. So of course, out of a successful idea, you sort of just poop money, which is great. Like money is a byproduct of a successful business. Whereas if your goal is money, then you're always sad every time you lose. You get a parking ticket, you're sad. You know, you, you, you have a doctor bill that you didn't want to have to pay, you get sad. Every little bill you get, you just get sad. When the reality is if, if you focus on, we're executing on something greater than this dollar, uh, then it makes you very excited. And a lot of people wonder like, hey Kevin, well, like how, how could you possibly have fun with all these different ideas that you have? That seems like a lot of work. It is, don't get me wrong, but 
let's consider some of the fun things that we've been able to do. So we ran for governor in California, which is really exciting. That's because of YouTube, right? We were on CNBC. We got profiled by the LA Times, the New York Times, although they didn't like us very much. Uh, we've got, uh, uh, you know, to go to New York City and be on Fox Business, got to go uh, to uh, the debate stage in Sacramento and debate other candidates and be part of polling. Like, it was really cool. It's an eye-opening experience. It's really fun. So the governor campaign was amazing. It was, it was spectacular. And, and that was because of YouTube or even just interviewing people, whether it's Patrick Bet David, Kevin O'Leary, uh, Barbara Corcoran, uh, having a birthday brunch with Kathy Wood uh, in, in Florida, and then that same day uh, having a, uh, a birthday dinner with my wife Lauren. Like, that's cool. Those experiences would not be possible if it weren't for going all in, right? Now, part of that obviously has to do with the fact that I bought a plane. It's very expensive. It was $12.9 million. And what's crazy about the plane, uh, a lot of uh, folks might not recognize this, but that's okay. The plane is expensive to operate. Right, so you're looking at 12.9 plus about 2.5 million dollars a year to operate a plane. What's remarkable is that you could have spent like seven million dollars on an old plane and gotten a plane that was like five times as large, but then your operating costs would have been like five a year. And so it kind of depends on your mission profile, what you're going for. My mission profile is closer to the West Coast, so I don't need as much range. I like a little more fuel economy, lower operating costs, and I also like newer. Now, I, I'm not the biggest fan of like, like buying brand new cars because they appreciate more quickly in value, but I do like newer safety technology just because it, it's a plane. <laughs> okay, anyway, like I wouldn't have a plane. I wouldn't have flown in it over 400 hours last year if I didn't have a purpose for it. It's like, oh, you want to go retire and sip a Mai Tai? Well, I could do that now. I could do that now while operating the businesses. Now I could just have a Mai Tai in any city I want uh, the same day and still be home in my own bed at night, <laughs> which is really cool. Uh, anyway, so uh, governor campaign, uh, the interviews, the plane, ringing the bell at the New York Stock Exchange, creating the startups uh, that we're creating and building a team, the team building. It's so much less lonely. Like it's, it's fun having a team of, of fantastic people working with us. Uh, this is very exciting. Now, uh, I want to be clear that uh, for HouseHack, uh, HouseHack, just sort of a disclaimer, yes, it is fundraising right now, househack.com slash 2024. Uh, you can invest in that if you're an accredited investor. It is, uh, in my opinion, I think, going to be a phenomenal company. Once we really cycle what we're doing, I think the valuation will be huge just because the cash flows will be huge for the company. I obviously can't guarantee that. This isn't a solicitation and all of that could be wrong. Uh, House Hack Homes, the little baby that it's creating, you know, hopefully in the future we'll be able to swipe up. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to bring you these products from the stock hack suit hack idea. And those are future ideas that I could look forward to. So the other thing that I have on top of this, which mind you, I pay for the plane personally, right? other things for you to keep in mind as we look forward is uh, I, I have a lot of excitement uh, about the future. See, I'm not depressed about the future. I'm actually excited about the future because I want to see my Robin Hood competitor win. And even if it doesn't, that's okay. Nobody else has invested in it. That's my money, right? I want to see House Hack not only succeed, but I want to see it become the greatest uh, stabilization company in, in the world. We can go international with this. I not only want to see House Hack succeed, though, uh, if House Hack succeeds, it probably is also going to be in part because House Hack Homes is succeeding. Uh, the baby of House Hack. These two uh, subsist uh, off of each other, essentially. Uh, this is great. People get to invest here as a venture capitalist and creating a business. People get to invest here for having no fee exposure to real estate. This is huge. These are really, really big ideas. So all of these things to me are very, very exciting. A lot of them really come to fruition towards the end of 2024. So I have a very, very exciting year ahead. We're just now knocking on the door of uh, April 1st. This is being filmed here March 31st. Uh, we do have an event coming up as well, which will be really fun. That's the June 21 to 23 event. You should come to that. Uh, ben Mala will be there. It'll be mostly real estate focused, but we'll be talking innovation, finance, real estate, investing. It'll be a really, really cool event in Vegas. We're about to announce the location for that, so stay tuned. Uh, but the point of, of really all of this is, yeah, you could just retire 
and, and give up and be done. But if you retire and give up and be done, what you're really doing is you're just giving yourself the freedom to uh, have my ties, spend time with the kids, uh, you know, maybe travel and do what you want. Do what you want, all right? That's sort of what you get if you retire. But the reality is I still get to do that. I travel way more now that uh, we're operating all these different businesses and I kind of need the time machine or the plane to be able to do it. Uh, I could still spend time with my children, although five of them, again, they're under five months old, so there's a limit to how much time you can really spend with them. So I spend more time with the eight and six-year-old, uh, mostly because they're sleeping all the, uh, most of the time, the, the under uh, five-month-olds. And so I still get to pick and do what I want. I just have more choices. So a lot of people in uh, 2022, for example, in January of 2022, were like, oh, Kevin, you know, why don't you just, you know, you, you did good. Like, why don't you just stop? It's like, why? That's not, that's not fun. Why would I stop? Like, we got a moving train here. Uh, oh, but if you keep going, you might hit some hurdles. So? So what? So what if there are bumps or rocks in the road? I don't care. Oh, but you might lose money making mistakes. So? Again, the end goal isn't the dollar sign. If the end goal is quite, and this is the other thing, this is sort of a place to end it on. If the end goal is this, uh, Mai Tai, uh, is it spelled like that or is it T-A-I? It might be T-A-I because it's more Hawaiian. Anyway, Mai Tai, uh, beach, time, freedom. You know, if that's sort of the end goal, well, you could literally try your heart out on everything, go BK, and after you go BK, live well beneath your means, have a regular job, maybe you're working 30 hours a week, if you're living well beneath your means, and you could still be hanging out on the beach with plenty of time and plenty of freedom and plenty of Mai Tais. Like, all of that is still possible post-BK, but it's also possible pre-BK, and you might never go BK. In fact, you could end up creating something substantially more desirable uh, and freeing uh, than just this. So, I don't know. Hopefully that's motivating for you. It is for me. A lot of people have been asking me to make a video like this, so I did. Here it is. Thanks so much. Good luck. Goodbye. So, now we're at the end of the video. What was the one thing? Now, it may not have been entirely clear because we really went through a weave, a, thor a sort of like patchwork of many different forms of psychology. The purpose of your employees, the purpose of your company, the believing in what you're doing, the innovation, the changing your mindset on the fear of failure. What was the one thing that ties all of this together? That is your employees' purpose, changing the, how you feel about failure accepting that even if all fails in the event of, let's say, a horrible BK, really your true end goal that everybody really wants, sipping those Mai Tais on the beach, can be had then or now, but what you want to recoil against, and we'll write bankruptcy versus that, uh, dare I say, home, that rehabilitation facility full of unexecuted ideas, so ideas versus action. There's one thing that ties all of the concepts of this video together. Everything comes down to one thing. And that one thing, very simple. When you change the end goal from money to action. You will stop letting failure affect you. Purpose will define your action. You'll know what to do. You'll stop letting that stupid bill or that invoice or that broken tire or broken down car or fix up that you have to do in the house or that landlord who scammed you or whatever. You'll stop letting those pains hurt you. And instead, you'll focus on that long-term future. You are acting on your ideas, your visions, your potential. You have the freedom to choose what you want to do. Yeah, even if you've got a W-2 job, you've got 40 hours a week that you spend on that W-2 job. How many hours do you have in a week after you sleep? 
somewhere between 110 and 120 hours depending on how much you sleep. You've got a lot of extra time. What are you doing with that time? And when you're driven by action and not money, you will fill this with the most purpose-filling life ever. Whether that is a, a life of experience, of fun, of, of trial, of error, of success and failure, it is one that is driven by action not money. If you're driven by money, you will almost always fail. If you're driven by action and actually fulfilling your ideas and your vision of what you want to do, you will live the most free life ever.